battle's not ours this morning. We need to quit trying to fight our own battles. Turn them over to God. But you know, it wears you out trying to fight your own battle. There's battles that we try to fight, whether it be things going on with our kids or our health or just this world altogether. Trying to fight our battles. Let's let God fight it this morning. Battles not mine.
shows up, uh, that's when we can have service, that's when we can, we feel the anointing of the Lord, and that's when things happen <laughs> in people's lives, things change. People have, all of us folks, we all got things that's going on in our lives, and we need the presence of the Lord, and we need Him to show up, especially when we assemble together, you know, we, we take, I believe the church does take for granted at times that... Every time that we come together and show up, the presence of the Lord or the anointing of the Lord shows up. The presence of the Lord, I, I, it, it, we can't take that for granted. 
We have to, to say, look, for, you know, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Father, we desire your presence. We have to have your presence. Otherwise, if his presence, if the anointing doesn't show up, you know, all we've done, we just gather together. We just got a social gathering where we can come and, and talk to one another and, and just see each other because maybe we haven't seen some of each other since Wednesday or, in, or since last Sunday. And we just want to get caught up on what's going on. Folks, if we're truly in the, in the mindset with one mind and one accord to come in, and I know I've come and I'll just speak for myself. I don't want to speak about anybody else because I can speak for myself. I can get mad at myself by, by talking about myself. So, and uh, I, I can get that uh, offended and uh, at myself because I can speak about what myself that I, the issues that I've had. I've come through those doors. We're supposed to come in his in the gates in his courts with praise, his gates of thanksgiving. His courts of praise. There's sometimes I've come through the door with other things on my mind that was going on, what I just was dealing with, what I have dealt with, or what I'm getting ready to deal with. And I come through those doors with all kinds of things on my mind, except for the purpose of coming into the house of God and that's to serve the Lord, keep my mind focused on Him, keep all the distractions out. And when I do that, when I get my mind to that point, you know what? I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel the anointing of the Lord. We can't do anything. Pre preachers will tell you this. We can't do one thing without the anointing of the Lord. All, all we can do is stand up here and talk, but when the anointing of the Lord, He comes in and He fills us and He uses us, uses our words, uses us. We're a mouthpiece, and when He uses us, you know what? The anointing comes in, the anointing breaks the yoke. That's what changes people's lives. That's where salvation, that's where deliverance, that's where healing. Everything takes place under the anointing of the Lord. Only thing we can do is be that mouthpiece for the Lord. And not just the ministers, not just the preachers, but each and every one of you that belong to the Lord. You are a minister, you are a servant, you're, you're supposed to be going out there and using your mouth, your conversation, and lift up, lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. So others can have that opportunity, the same that you and I have. That's all, that's all the Lord says I'm presenting to you. I'm presenting to you an opportunity. I'm knocking at your heart's door. I'm speaking to you. Now, you, it's your part to accept. It's your part to open the door. It's your part to acknowledge me, to acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's what he's saying to us. Amen. Folks, I think he's speaking loudly to us. And that is, that is not the message this morning. First of all, I do want to say that this is Memorial Day weekend. Uh, tomorrow is actually the Monday Memorial Day. That's the uh, day that uh, has been set aside for. I know that it, there's no, no reason not to do this. We go and visit the graves of our loved ones that have died and, and went on, and, and, there's not a, and everybody should do that. What I'm saying is don't forget the meaning of what Memorial Day is, and that is the veterans that died. That is the ones that have and went on and, and was called, the, the, the calling was to go out and fight for the country, fight for our nation, and did not make it home and gave the ultimate sacrifice. Let's remember that Memorial Day is truly for the veterans. Would, the, would every veteran in here stand, please? We will acknowledge you this morning. Thank you. Thank you. And the wife to survive. Okay, absolutely. There, there was a, I don't know if he was an admiral or a general or one of them said, said really the, the veterans are the ones that actually do the work, but the, the wives are the ones behind the scenes and they're working just as hard to keep everything going as the household would be and let the veterans go do their job. So absolutely, the wives and the veterans. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you mentioned that. So, and we give you honor also this morning. We say this every year, and we have to because it's so true. If it wasn't for this flag right here, which is known as the Christian flag, we wouldn't be flying this flag. If it wasn't for this flag, we couldn't freely fly this flag. But the blessings of the Lord come when I believe we fly. The Lord made it clear who he would bless if we bless Israel. And that's what we do here. 
We bless Israel because we bless the Lord. The Lord blesses us, and he said, I'll be a blessing to you if you bless the, my called out ones, the ones that I specifically said are my people. That is Israel. That is in the natural. We know without going into a whole lot of teaching that there is the spiritual, there is the natural. The natural is Israel. The spiritual is the body of Christ. And we come together. There, the word in Galatians says there is no more Jew nor Greek. There is no more bond or female. There is no more bond or free. There is only one in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So we're all one. We've been united into one new man, as, as the Bible tells us. But we do give honor to the to veterans that have that paid the ultimate sacrifice, and uh, we just uh, we just think how blessed we are to live in a nation where we can freely come together, just like we are this morning. There's a lot of, of our brothers and sisters in other nations that can't do what we're doing this morning without the fear of being arrested, being tortured, being put in prison, and even being killed. So, folks, let's not ever take that for granted. This morning I want to talk about hearing and listening the voice of God, or the voice of God. Do we know when we're truly hearing the Word of God? Do we know when uh, we say it this way sometimes? I hear you. I hear you. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. But are we truly listening to what's being said? And I think there's a difference, and I want to talk about that this morning. Because God is speaking to us. Somebody might say, well, you know, I, I've never heard the voice of God. I've never heard God speak to me. If you sit under preaching, anointed preaching, if you have read the word of God, if you have heard anointed songs, you are hearing God speak. Amen. You are hearing his voice. So. Yeah. Now, it may not be the voice that you are hearing, but God is speaking to you through the voice that you are hearing. Let me give you an example. I got this on down, but I'll just go ahead and say it. If I said to my son, Jared, I said, if I said, Jared, would you go tell Carl that if he needs anything, all he has to do is let me know. And Jared goes and tells Carl those exact words. Who's speaking to Carl? Is Jared speaking to him? Jared's voice is speaking to him, but you know what he's done? He's carried a message for me. When he tells you and me to go tell and go and speak to and say this, and that, that it may, somebody may not use these words, and, and if the Lord doesn't say it, don't say it. But if the Lord says, say it, say it. I, I'm coming to you because the Lord told me to say this. I'm saying this because thus saith the Lord. You, if the Lord tells you to speak it that way, then speak it just exactly that way. But the Lord might put it on your heart to go talk to somebody and go speak to somebody, to speak words of encouragement, to speak a word in due season or in due time that somebody's looking for, and somebody is waiting for that word, and you go say, I don't understand this, but I feel like I need to tell you this. And you give them a word. And they look at you going, how do you know so I didn't know nothing. The only thing I'm just telling you is what the Lord put on my heart, and I was supposed to go deliver this message. Amen. Amen. And see, what happens is there's two people that's heard the word of God just then. The one the message is for and the one that's being the deliverer. See, this morning all I'm doing is being the, the I'm delivering a message. I'm a messenger. I'm all, all I'm doing is letting you know what I believe the Lord has given me to give to us today. So, some might say, well, brother, this, this is the, your message or the message you're given. I say, praise God, this is the message that he knows what we have need. And he gives the message. I just speak it out of my mouth. Genesis 1-1. Uh, Genesis 1-1. I'm going to read the, the 1 and 2 and then just a little bit of 3. Got up on the board. In the beginning, everybody knows this. Uh, we've, we've talked many times. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, I'll stop right there. God spoke to nothing, and something happened. God spoke into advance of, of, of just what we would call nothing or blank, but when God speaks, things happen. 
God spoke everything into existence. Once God opened his mouth and he started to speak and words came forth, everything that, that was out there and that we might call a span of nothing, everything that was there that had a ear had to do what God said because he's the creator. He created all things with and God said. And God said. God spoke things into existence. Whatever. His creation hears his voice, knows his voice, and knows they don't have a choice but to act upon it. They know when God speaks that when, when it's his voice that they have to do what the voice says to do. Are we any different? Absolutely not. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this time together. We thank you for my brothers and sisters. Thank you that you assembled us together today to hear what you have for us. Father, get me completely out of the way. Remove anything that I would want to add. You just speak the exact words that you want spoken today. I thank you for it, Lord, and I pray you for it. And you know each and every one that's here today to hear it. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Brian, get ready. Exodus 19, 19. Everybody was gathered together under at the foot of Mount Sinai. Uh, some say that, uh, and, and I agree with both of them. I agree with both of these. Some said the church was birthed at the day of Pentecost when everybody was one in one mind, one accord. Uh, the Holy Spirit came down and it filled everybody that was in the upper room. They came out, they spake in, in different languages and other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance and everybody understood in their own language. And they were, it says, if you keep reading on down there, and it says there was about 3,000 uh, souls that were added and were saved. And it says that, that the, there was many that was added to the church daily as, as it, it was being preached and being taught. I believe also that at the foot of Mount Sinai, you know what church is? It's called the Ecclesia. It's called the called out ones. We've been called out for a purpose. God took his, his, his group of people that he brought, he called them out of Egypt and he put them to, them to the base of Mount Sinai. And he said, this is what I'm going to do. My desire is to speak to my people. My desire is to come down and be with my people. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I gathered you together. I gathered the Ecclesia. I called them out. And he, they gathered them all together. I believe that is a church gathering. What he did, the assembly, gathered the assembly. And he started to speak. Exodus 19 and 19 says, and when the voice of the trumpet sounded, did you know the trumpet has a voice? And if you look that word trumpet up in the Hebrew, you know what the Hebrew word for trumpet is? Shofar. And when the voice of the trumpet of the shofar sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake and God answered him by a voice. shofar was sounded for four there, there's probably more that when you get into minute details but the four main reasons that the uh, so far is sounded is number one is to it's during feast to announce feast it's, there, it's blown during the feast of the lord is to call an assembly together it's to, that's why we open up brother winston started it years ago on the shofar to start the assembly to, to start the service also, it is a warning or an alarm. If somebody saw the enemy afar off, they would grab a shofar. How do you let people know what's going on? They would grab the shofar, they'd grab the ram's horn. And usually it wasn't just one person. They had people designated to sound the alarm. And there would be a group of people blowing the shofar. And they would blow it in a pattern. Did you hear the pattern that he blown? There, there is a pattern. And there is a certain call on the shofar that announces each one of these, assembly, whether it's a feast, assembly, or alarm, or warning. But here's what I like. It's also used to confuse the enemy. See, there's a teaching in, in, in Jewish history is that when the shofar is blown, it confuses the enemy. It confuses the devil. Our enemy. See, what he don't know 
If you don't know if that's a shofar being blown, Mark, or if that's the voice of God speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Did, did we just not read 19, 19 the voice of, a tr of the trumpet? <clears throat> and it sounded long and loud and waxed louder and louder, and Moses spake, and God answered him by voice. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, folks, if, God, if we're listening, God's speaking. Yeah. God's showing his people things. He showed Abraham in Genesis 22, 15. He said, and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven a second time and said, by myself I have sworn, saith the Lord, because thou hast done this thing. And the thing that he has done is he didn't withhold his son. God told him to go sacrifice his son. And he went to do it. He did it in his heart. The only thing he didn't do was just drop the knife. The knife was in his hand. He was going to do it, but the angel stopped him. And this is what the angel of the Lord, God sent this angel. You know what the Hebrew word for angel is? Messenger. So a messenger from God came and called on Abraham the second time, saying, said this, By myself I have sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and multiply, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of in heaven as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of the enemies, and in thy seed, listen to this, shall all, that means all, all, and in thy seed all nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Wow. Hearing, listening, and obeying. Would you call it, would you say that's important? Amen. All nations of the earth are of the earth are blessed because Abraham heard, he listened, and he obeyed. When the Lord speaks to our heart, and he we maybe at this point we haven't received him as our savior. We had to say, Lord, I want to serve you. I want you to be my savior. I want to call unto you and I know you'll be there for me. But before we do that. You know what Revelation 3 and 20 says? It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him, will sup with him, and he with me. If he will, he, if the Lord's standing at the door and he's knocking, it says, If any man hear my voice, that's exactly what he does. He knocks on our heart's door. And when we hear him knock and we feel saying, There's something going on inside of me that I just don't understand. I don't know, but I believe. It is the Lord my God. Oh, I believe he's speaking out to me. I believe he's wanting me to do something to speak to him. And he says, not only am I knocking, he said, but if you'll hear my voice, if you'll hear me speak to you and say, I want you to serve me. I want you to uh, surrender your life. I want you to surrender your heart to me, and I'll take care of you from this point on. That's exactly what he's saying. Hey, now, he didn't say it's going to be easy. He didn't say it's going to be just all the better roads. And we're going to get through this life and, 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 and without any problems or issues or troubles. He did not give us that promise. Matter of fact, he said, in life, you're going to have tribulation. But he said, I'm with you always, even till the end. So whatever we, you and me go through, he's there. As long as we acknowledge him, we're talking to him, and more importantly, we're listening to him. Because he knows what we need. He knows the right direction. He knows the path that he wants us to take. And let, let me tell you something, folks. I, I, I've been at this point for many years in my life, and I've been at a big point in my life. I see no other way that we can not only make it into a place of everlasting life to be with Jesus, there, because there is no other way. It's only through Jesus Christ. But you, you can look around and Listen, there's danger on every front. There is, there is so much going on in life. There's no guarantees in this life whatsoever. There's no guarantees, folks, that we make it out this door. There's no guarantees that we get in our vehicle and go down the road. We even make it home today. So the comforting thing for me to know is, is when I turn my life over to the giver of life, to the Prince of Peace, to the one that can give me comfort to know that if I don't make it any further than where I am, you know what? I'm going to be with him. That's why you can't threaten a Christian with going to heaven. 
A fear tactic is, is I'm going to kill you, or you're going to die, and all this, you know, that I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. Well, the Bible says, the, the Bible says all you can do is take this body. All you can do is take the body. My soul and spirit belongs to him, and I'll immediately be in his presence, because to be absent from the body is to be present with him. Matter of fact, Jesus said it this way, if you want to fear something, you fear the one that not only can destroy this body, but can, can destroy soul and spirit in hell. Yeah. That's the one. If you want to really fear, that's what you need to fear. But don't fear the one that can just take this body. Because one day, folks, this body is going to lay down one way or the other. This mortal uh, that we are is going to put on immortality one day through our soul and spirit in, in being in the presence of the Lord. And I know one day, because I gave my heart and my life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to be with him. John 10 and 1 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. What he's saying is, as a thief and a robber, he said, number one, thieves and robbers don't make it to heaven. He said, number two, there's only one door. And isn't this the year of the door? I believe he's talking to us, folks. He's shouting to us. I'd like to use Sam Hughes' words. He's shouting at us. Verse 2, But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep. <laughs> Mothers, if you've got your son out there, your daughter, and they're a child, and they're out there, well, Mama hollers and says, I'll, I'll use me. Of course, when Mama thinks, she'd say, Joseph Stewart. <laughs> That's where I first learned to come to the attention, see? <laughs> Whatever I was doing, I'd stand and I'd look because I'd hear, I'd hear Mama calling. I'd hear my grandmother calling me. I knew her voice. You know what? She knew mine. Because if I was on the playground and I started screaming and I started hollering, guess what? My mom was the first one up there. Because she knew my voice. He knows our voice. Our Heavenly Father knows our voice as well as we know His voice. And He calls us by name. Is there an example of that? He said, there, there is. Uh, if you think about Samuel, Samuel lay down to go to sleep and, and he heard, heard the Lord call on him, Samuel, Samuel. Is the voice of the Lord. Saul was riding into Damascus, and he heard a, heard a voice from heaven. Saul, Saul, he knows us, folks, a whole lot better than we even know ourselves. Verse four, and he putteth forth his own sheep; he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they. No, not the voice of strangers. Many years ago, there was an evangelist who came through here about once a year, and he even started to come in, and we'd have men's retreats. Winston had met him some before. Where would y'all meet Gordon Stacy? Uh, you remember? Yeah. Winchester. Winchester. That's right. That's right. Well, uh, and uh, Winchester. Well, Gordon started coming here. He preached a message one, one time. I never forgot it. And the message was called Land Leaders. He said he asked he asked the men that was there at the men's conference. He said he said, "Well, I want to I want to see a bunch of land leaders." And then he began to explain what a land leader was. It says when the shepherd would gather the sheep and, he, and they'd put them out in a little pasture over here, and he would go out and he would the shepherd would do what he's doing and the sheep were doing what they were doing in the pasture, and there would be some time go by. He was just going to let them graze and, and do what they do, and he would be over here doing what they do, maybe even outside. And he said. When he was getting ready to gather them together, he didn't just walk over there. What he did was holler at them. Yeah. And I, I pictured this way. I'd, I'd really like to ask a shepherd this. If I ever get the opportunity to go back to Israel and we, we get to talk to a shepherd, I'd like to. I said, you know, out of all them sheep, do you name all them sheep? Because I'd like to know that. But what happens is the shepherd calls the sheep. He, he speaks and he calls the sheep. When the sheep hear his voice, you know what they do? They start, they start leaping. He said the little lambs will start leaping because you know why? They heard the shepherd talking. It's exciting for them. And when they hear them, they're looking. 
And when they find the direction of the bush, you know what they do? The shepherd can just take off walking. Just take off walking. Reminds me of a story Dean told Will. I wasn't going to tell this. I didn't even thought about it until now. But he said it this way. I've used this a few times. He said, you know that a, that the, a sheep is one of the barnyard, what's considered a barnyard animal that can't swim. And if you think about it, it makes sense. Because of, of the wool, and if it got wet and they were trying to swim, it would be so heavy. So what they look for is a little, very little water just to drink from, but they look for a path to just pass way over there. And he said, what happens is, he said, when, they, when the shepherd finds that little crossing where they can go over, the shepherd just takes off walking. And he gets to the other side. But you know what? Sometimes there's a little lamb that won't follow because they're afraid. Because they're afraid of water. Because of that reason. We don't want the sheep. And then all the other sheep are back there with the lamb. If the lamb's crying over here, all the sheep stay with the lamb. When one of us is hurting and you're going through things, we are together together that lift that one up. That's what the sheep do. They know to do that. You know what the shepherd has to do to get the sheep to go to the other side across the street? He has to go get that little lamb that's crying. Yeah. And he has to bend down and he has to pick it up in his arms and he has to walk that little lamb across. Yeah. And that little lamb's still bawling. That little lamb's still crying. It's, it's, it's saying, oh no, oh no. And it crosses over on the other side. And the lamb quiet, goes quiet and he sets the little lamb down and he starts walking. And you know what happens? All the others start following. Sometimes the shepherd has to take go and get a little lamb and has to take it across the other side to the other side just so we can get others to follow. Sometimes we don't understand a lot of things. Sometimes we don't understand why tragedies and, and why people end up uh, dying either at a young age or during an old age. Maybe, maybe it's just all of a sudden all at once. We don't know why these things are. But life, it, it, it's life and we do know the cause of it. Sometimes people want to blame everything else. They want to blame from the, the doctors, the, the, the disease, or whatever it is, or self, whatever's going on in people's life. They want to blame, but folks, the true blame is sin. Mm -hmm. Sin is the reason for death. There's a penalty for sin, and, they, and God said it at the start. He, he told Adam and Eve specifically, he said, if you eat of that tree, you will surely die, because in the day that you eat of it, we don't understand a lot of things, but we trust God. And that's what he's asking us to do, and that's what we do. We trust him. I said this Wednesday night, there's, there's so many voices out there that's trying to, try to get your attention, trying to not only get our attention, but try to keep our attention, to try to keep our focus off of, on, on the things of the Lord. And sometimes he gets us distracted. He gets us over here doing something way off course. And sometimes it's hard that, that we, we learn a hard lesson. We kind of come to ourselves or we wake up one time and say, what in the world am I doing over here? I shouldn't be over here. This is the wrong path. This is the wrong place. I should not be here. And when we come to that, we come back to the place where God has placed us in Him. See, folks, God laid, laid this out. You know what He's not doing? He's not going, sitting up there and he's, he, he, he said, now, I've got two or three angels over here to one person because there's an innumerable amount of angels. And if he wanted to, he could sign the whole host of angels to us to one person. And, and I'll use me. He said, now, uh, I've got Joe out here and he's doing, doing this work. Now, I've got three angels over here and I've got three angels over here. And they're scribes for me. They're writing down there all the good things he's doing. And this one's over here writing down all the bad things he's doing. Oh, well, now you've got plenty of a racer over here on the good things, don't you? Because... And you, you'll have to race out the good things because, well, he'll have to have the bad things and you'll have to have the good things. And he's not up there marking it out and racing. That's not what he's doing. According to his word, this is what he's doing. He said, I laid out two paths before you. But you know how he said it in the word? He says, this day I set before you good and evil. You choose. 
You can choose this road, which is the good road, or this road, it's the evil road, or the sinful road, or the road of the world. He said, if you take this road over here, I've already built in blessings. They're already built in your walk. Because I know you, and uh, some of y'all might remember the teaching when he created us from the foundations of the world. Mom and dad, our parents just gave us our body, but we were created in Christ Jesus from the foundation of the world. So he said, I know your life because Psalms 139 says, I wrote a book about you. I know all your life. I wrote that book. And he said, in your book, there's a road just like this road's in every person's book. Good and evil. You choose. I put it before you every day. Every day we've got a choice, folks. We have to choose to do good or we can choose not to do good. We choose to do good to build the blessings are built in. And we can walk down there and every place we go, well, there's a blessing of the Lord. Well, there's a blessing of the Lord. If I do this, oh, there's a blessing. If I do this, there's a blessing. But if I choose not to do this, then I've got to walk this road that has been cursed. And I've got to deal with everything by myself on this road. Him to know that to do good and do it not, to him is sin. We gotta guard our gates, our eye gate, ear gate, mouth gate. When we guard those gates, folks, we can hear him speak to us. There's a natural world, there's a spiritual world. There's a seen world, and then there's an unseen world. The unseen world controls actions, controls people. The unseen is the spirit realm. And yes, folks, we do we do live in a spirit realm. We are spiritual people. We, we literally live in two worlds. There's a spiritual person. Who we really are is, is soul and spirit. That's who God created in his image and his likeness. You know, from if you if some time read it and study this out. When God said, let us make man. He created us in his image and his likeness. You know the image and likeness are two different things. <laughs> we got the image of God because we were created to be like him. And there's a likeness. We didn't lose our image when man sinned, but we lose, we lost his likeness. You know how we lost his likeness? Because the character of God is to do good and not do evil and not to sin. When man said, I know better than God and I'll take the fruit and I'll eat of it. And as, as Eve was deceived and gave to Adam, which rebelled and says, well, she ate it, I'll eat it. Their eyes were open. They knew right from wrong or they knew good from evil. Then at that particular time, they lost the likeness of God because they lost his character of doing good. Now sin entered into their life. Now, how do we get our likeness back to, as, with our image? Is the only way we can do it is in Christ Jesus. See, when we put on Christ Jesus, we put on His nature. His nature is of God. So we lost the likeness of God, but we gained the likeness back. So now, in Christ Jesus, when we say, Lord, I accept you as my Savior, I want to follow you the rest of my life. I want to live for you. Save me. And at that moment, when you receive Christ as your Savior, you have put back on the likeness of God. Hallelujah. You can't do it yourself. I can't do it myself. But through Christ Jesus, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. That is shouting with fear right there. As I said, I believe he's speaking to us each and every day. He, he's, God shows up in our lives so much, so much and so many times. And folks, we got a preconceived idea of how he's going to show up. Number one, we always expect the, the supernatural, we expect the miracle, we expect angels to come down and, and we, we expect, expect the, the manifestations of everything uh, that, that what I, I know that people have experienced, what the Bible talks about when Solomon was dedicated to the temple, it says the priest as they were ministering, said that the, the uh, sanctuary there was filled with the presence of God and the glory and nobody could stand in his presence. 
But understand something, folks. God shows up in a lot of places when we miss him because we're looking for something that we preconceived of how he's going to do things. How many times have, have the, I, I truly believe, folks, the Lord gives us this message. God shows up in people. God shows up in people. And we miss the presence of God or we'll miss the word of God if we think that God can't use somebody. Well, the Lord wouldn't use him. The Lord wouldn't use her. There ain't no way. And we miss the Lord because we've got a preconceived idea that the Lord can't use somebody. That's why everybody, folks, I don't care who they are, I don't care what they've done, they deserve our respect. Amen. I don't care what their life's like and what doesn't matter what they're involved in, no matter what they've been involved in, everybody deserves to be treated with respect. Amen. Because that's exactly what you want to be treated. God can't do anything. Their life's been a mess. But you don't know God saved them, sanctified them, filled them with the Holy Ghost, and they're standing up there doing the work of God. And we'll let God just walk right on by and because we're not paying them no mind or no attention. God help us. Help us, Lord. And we're listening for your voice. We're listening for you. If, you, if somebody comes and says, I've got a word for you, well, okay, give me the word. This is this word from the Lord, huh? Okay. I'm sitting there listening. If it bears witness with my spirit, if it's something I've been praying about, something I've been reading in the word of God, I will know immediately if this is from the Lord. Because I've had people speak to me saying they've got a word in them. Wow, thank you, Jesus. I've heard people speak to me and say, I don't know where it came from. Thank you. Thank you for delivering. This go dead? Yeah, I'm ready to go dead. Okay. You dead. You understand? I'm listening, and I want to always be listening. Have I missed him? I'm sure I have. I can't just remember off the top of my head because I confess it to you, or at least I do. But I can, I'm sure I missed it because I thought the Lord was going to do it this way. He don't always do it the way, folks, we think he's going to do it. He can do it however he chooses. God shows up in his creation. You know, if you're really truly looking and you understand the Lord and his presence, all you have to do is walk out on your back porch, front porch, side porch, or just walk out into a open area and just look around. You can see the presence of the Lord everywhere. If you see the trees, if you see the clouds, if you see the sky, if you see the grass, if you see anything, flowers, you, if you see, you're seeing the creation of the Lord. And He's there. He shows up in His creation, folks. And if you, if, if you doubt all this just happened by circumstance or by chance, uh, then you've got more faith than I've got because I can't believe that much. If you believe that, some, that everything started by, if the, if the Big Bang happened, it happened because God said bang or God said let it happen. That's why it happened. But if you believe that it just something happened out of nothing, then you absolutely got faith that I can't achieve. I can't do that. I believe in, in a creative God that created all things. And he's my creator. And he's my Lord. And I trust him. And I know, I know that I know that I know that I know you can't convince me any, any different. Second Peter 1 and 21 says, For prophecy came not by old time, but by the will of man. The holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And I get this so much, and I'm sure you all have too, People saying, uh, you know, well, I'll talk about, well, the Word of God says this was about, well, now the Word of God, the Bible was written by me. Uh, you wouldn't believe the number of times that you hear people say, well, the Bible was written by men. Men's not perfect. Men's infallible. Men make mistakes. I said, well, you probably should go and research that scripture, that one there, Second Peter 1, 21, where it says, holy men of old spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Just, just do the word studies and search it out. And uh, I'll tell you what it says. It says it just like this. It says, God says, I want you to write. And you've got your pen in your hand. And you place that pen right down here on that paper. 
and then just before you make any dot, any mark whatsoever, the hand of God reaches down on your hand, just like that little first grader or kindergarten when you said, here, let me help you write your name. And you've got your hand on, on this hand, and God's got his hand on your hand, and you're writing and making those letters, every letter that you made, that you wouldn't have a clue on how to make it, you wouldn't have a clue on how to write it, but God says, I'm going to write it. I'm the author. I'm going to write it. I'm just going to use your hand to pen it. And that's exactly what he did. That is what that scripture says. It didn't say me and what men thought or what men got from themselves is what they, they wrote down. They wrote as they were moved, as God spake. God spake to them and they spoke exactly what God said and they wrote it down with the hand of God guiding them. It's just no different than that. It says the finger of God wrote the Ten Commandments on the tablet. Written by the finger of God. That's the way God wrote his word. How do we know that we are alive we, because we're breathing, right? Number one. Number two is we know that we're alive because the word of God is alive. The Lord, this word of God is a living, breathing, living word. And it says God inspired this. God breathed into it. The inspiration of God is what brought the word forth. The word was breathed out. We are a living soul because why? God breathed the breath of life into mankind, and mankind became a living soul. Deuteronomy 28 1, it says this And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of thy Lord God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I have commanded thee this day. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all nation, all and, and all these blessings shall come unto thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. That word hearken is shama, to listen, to hear, to obey, to hear with attention and interest. It's one thing to hear what's being said, folks, but to listen to what's being said and to listen to it intently to understand what the voice of God is saying. Again, there's a bunch of things in this world that's trying to get our attention, that's trying to get us distracted and trying to hear this voice. Let me speak this into you. Let me speak over here. And then what it does, it drowns out this voice because this is a still small voice. If you constantly are over here and don't make time for this voice, all the voice you're going to hear is this voice. Her voices. And we make time, we come over here and we say, listen to this voice. Lord, speak to me. Lord, talk to me. I want to pray and, and I want to spend time with you, Lord. Whatever that time is, that's between you and the Lord. But you you call on to him. You say, Lord, this is your servant. I come before you to honor you and praise you. I give you glory. You just don't come into the presence of God. You gotta come into the presence of God a certain way. You gotta come in with honor, with thanksgiving. With giving praise. And then you say, Lord, I just want to talk to you. If I've got this need, I tell him about this need. If I don't have a need in my life, I say, Lord, I just want to spend time with you. I just want to talk to you. And I talk to him just like I'm talking to, to anyone. I speak to him. I give him I'm reverence. I give him reverence because he's due reverence. And I speak to him and I talk to him. And then I've had to learn this, folks, is over time that when I get through praying and talking to him, I shut up and I just sit there or I lay there and I listen for him to speak to me. There's times that I'd speak to him and I'd get up and off that go. I'd be, you know, doing my thing and then he'd hit me one day and just uh, stop me in my tracks and say, what if he had something to say to me? I just got up, started doing my own thing after I poured, poured out my heart, poured out to him, and I didn't give him my opportunity to speak anything to me. Everything else was going on in my life. In my head. I, folks, we got to... If you don't take time for the Lord, you, you, you won't find time for it. But if you make time for it, you'll always, you'll always know that you've got time for it. Hey, he made time for us. We should make time for him. <coughs> and he said, if we will listen to his voice, we will hearken unto his voice. He said, the blessings will overtake you. We'll go down that road that, that he laid out.
out here that's good, the blessings are already there. He said you'll be the first, not the last. You'll be the head, not the tail. You'll be blessed to coming and going, no matter where you are. But in Deuteronomy 28, you get down to verse 15. He says, and if you do not hearken unto the words, if you do not obey my voice, if you do not listen to me, that's what he's saying. This is what will happen. You won't be the first, you'll be the last. These curses are laid out. This is the road of the curses that you're going to have to go through if you don't listen, and I don't listen to the Lord. If we listen to him, we got the blessings. If we don't, we got the curses. That's what we have to go through. We have to wander around like we know what we're doing, and it's obvious we don't. He said, in the blessing side, you'll be the lender and not the borrower. But if he said, on the curses side, you'll be the borrower and not the lender. You'll have everyone over here calling you blessed. Every time they see you, man, look at the blessings of the Lord on that person. Look at, look at him. There's something about the, the, the Christians that's listening to the Lord will know and understand. Well, oh, they're blessed. Somebody said, how you doing? I said, I'm blessed. He said, I know that. I know you're blessed. And, and, and I can say the same for a lot. I can say the same for a lot of women here because I know you're blessed. I know you've got the blessings of the Lord in your life. <coughs> Jeremiah 7 23 says, But this thing command I then, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you will be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it shall be well with you. See, not all people will hear his voice, or not all people will choose to hear his voice. And when he starts speaking, they won't understand what's being said, and what's being told. John 12, 27. <coughs> now my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then come... Then came a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by heard it and said, It thundered. The others said, An angel spoke to him. You know what? When, the, when God spoke out of heaven, not everybody heard it. It sounded like thunder. It sounded like a bunch of old low voices over here. I didn't understand what was being said. He said, An angel must have spoke to him because he's, he's acknowledging something. If we're, if we're listening, folks, we'll hear, the, we'll hear God speak. If we're not listening, and, we, and it doesn't pay any mind to us, when we get so busy over here, when we get so distracted over here, we just choose not to, not to want to hear the voice of God. You're not going to hear the voice of God. You're going to want to hear Him. You're going to be listening. Folks, if it's a still, small voice, you have to be listening. At least a little loud thing will distract you. You have to get over here and you have to really listen. And sometimes you have to be real quiet. Sometimes you have to get your prayer closet to hear what the Lord said. What does say the Lord? John 12, 30, Jesus said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now it is the judgment of this world, and now shall the prince of this world be cast out. If I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Our Creator, our Heavenly Father, is speaking more louder and louder to us each day. The charge to us is, are we hearing, are we listening, are we, are we obeying His voice? Matthew 17, uh, While He yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Pretty plain. God, God told him that on the mount there, the transfiguration, he told me, he said, This is my beloved son. Hear you. Listen to him. Listen to what he's got to say. Uh, musicians, if you would, would you come up? Brother Joe, I was thinking about uh, the last song that I wrote, and uh, this, uh, Brother Paul was on the TV, and you know, he He's talking to this man, he said, How you gonna do it? He said, That man said, This person's supposed to go with everything. Well, Paul said, I wish somebody brought a song out there. And I was in the dining room. I heard that voice playing say, 
said, Jerry, get your pen. Just like that, said, Jerry, get your pen. I walked into the kitchen table in there, and I had a pair of pen laying there. And I went in there as fast as I could say it, as fast as I could write it. But it wasn't me. I didn't do the words God did. As fast as I could write like that, those words were coming in. Just as fast as I could write like that. quick. I mean, that quick. So I know God, I mean, He does this. Oh, As we get ready to give an altar call, I want to uh, I want to show this powerful testimony. This is this is eight minutes. This is talking about hearing the voice of God or hearing the word of God, but he's relaying it to a natural experience. It's, it, it's a powerful message. It lasts, it lasts eight minutes. It's not that long. But I want you to listen to what was said. And this is this is a true testimonial message. It's by David Gibbs. If you've heard him, he, he's a powerful minister. But this actually happened to him. Becky, would you go ahead and play it? Okay. Make sure the sound's up right. I was in Alaska doing a lawsuit. We're way out at the Aleutian Islands, getting ready to leave and go back to Anchorage and then home. And I had a ticket in my pocket to get out of there. The pastor came and he said, listen, I can save you money. I said, how's that? He said, I flew a small airplane up here and I fly a small airplane and I can take you in my little airplane and you can save your ticket. And this did not sound, I said, gee, thank you so very, very much. But I've got this ticket. We'll just make our way on home, me and this other lawyer with me. He said, no, 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 you got to do it. You got to do it. And against every better judgment I had, I said, okay. Well, we went out to the airport, took us by his little plane, and I looked at it. And I thought, well, one good thing, it's shiny. Then he walked around it. We got in. He's on the left front. I'm on the right front. The other lawyer's sitting right behind me. And he started it up, and it started up just fine. Well, we taxied out. I said, should we pray? He said, yeah, that's a good idea. We normally don't. I said, well, this time we're good. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I prayed five, eight minutes. I prayed a long time. We went and got on the runway. He starts down the runway. The plane lifted off ever so gently, and we start climbing. And it's wonderful. Not a problem in the world. We started climbing and we flew probably three, four minutes, and something happened that will never leave my mind. The pilot turned to me and he said, We're going in the clouds and I can't fly in clouds. They make me pass out. I said, Clouds make you do what? <laughs> now it's been cloudy all day, and we go right up into the clouds and you can't see anything. And he looks at me, and his eyes roll back in his head. And he starts mumbling, and he passes out, passed out cold. Now I grabbed him, and I shook him, and I said, come on, you got to wake up so I can kill you. Now we are in the clouds, flying along with no pilot. And my friend in the back seat said, we're dead, aren't we? I said, there's a very good chance of that, yes. He said, what are we going to do? I said, I don't know. But there was a radio right there, and I handed him the microphone, and I said, start asking for help. So he's in the back seat reaching up, and he said, hello, hello. We didn't know any proper radio etiquette. All we were saying was hello. And somebody answered back, hello, hello. Don't you guys know proper radio etiquette? And I said, get him. I said, tell him, we don't know nothing. Tell him, we're in an airplane with a passed out pilot, and we don't know how to fly this plane. The guy said, I'm a freighter flying out of Anchorage on the way to Tokyo. And he said, you're telling me you have nobody who can fly that plane with you? He said, tell him that's correct. Now, you can understand, I am sweating bullets. He said, the first thing I'm going to do is start circling so I don't lose you. Because I'll fly out of range of your radio, and you won't have me anymore. And he said, I'm going to get Anchorage emergency for you. An Anchorage emergency will be the people who can maybe help you try to save your life. After about five minutes, Anchorage came on and said, we understand you have a passed out pilot. And those of you who do not know how to fly that plane, he said, that's right. 
They said, well, the first thing we've got to do is find you. And I'll never forget what this man at Anchorage said. He said, my job is to get you home safe. He said, that's my job. But he said, here's the deal. If you want me to get you home safe, you got to promise me you'll obey my voice. He said, you can't see me, but I can see you. And he said, if you're not going to obey my voice, you're going to die. When you can't see anything, you have no idea how disorientated you become. Finally, he said, okay, I found you. Now, hear me clear. He said, you're four minutes from a mountain. He said, you're going to crash in that mountain and die. Follow my voice. I never said, I have to follow your voice. <clears throat> Is that reasonable? You see, I understood without his voice, I had nothing. And do you understand? Without God's voice, you have nothing. Nothing. Finally, he got us turned. And he said, I'm freezing all the traffic in the area. He said, it's going to take me an hour and a half to get you to Anchorage. And there's a lot of weather between you and Anchorage. You're in for a rough ride. And he said, I want you to hear me. I don't want you to look at what's going on outside. I don't want you to pay attention to the storm. Just my voice. He said, if you start watching the storm, you will die. But I'll take you through it. Now, because they cleared all the traffic, several pilots, those nighttime freighters, those 747s, started talking to us. They said, we're praying for you, men. You're going to make it. But listen to the voice. That's the key. They said, trust the voice. You realize your head is full of voices. And everybody in this world wants to talk to you. And everybody wants to be the controlling voice. And God says, I want you to be a living sacrifice. I want you to put yourself on the altar and let my voice be your voice. Finally, we went through the worst of the weather, but there was still more. And then the voice came back and it said, now, I'm going to line you up. He said, I'm going to bring you in right down the runway. And at the foot of the runway are some lights, and they're in the form of a cross. He said, don't you forget this. The cross is the way home. Finally, he's bringing us down. We still can't see anything. And all he kept saying is, stay with me. My sheep, the Bible says, hear my voice, and they follow me. Finally, just a couple hundred feet off the ground, we saw the cross. I landed the plane. In fact, I landed it seven times. <laughs> Finally, it all came to a stop, and the minute we stopped, the pilot woke up. The voice said, thanks for listening. I watch them crash and burn all the time because they won't follow my voice. They don't understand I'm the one who can see them even when they can't see me. But they get the voices in their head, and they kill themselves. They self-destruct. Thanks for listening to the voice. Then they put us in a motel room at about four in the morning. I knock at my door. And I opened the door and a man was standing there. He said, hello, David. I said, your voice. You're the one who got me home. He said, I am. Do you understand one day you're going to stand before him and say, you were the voice. You're the voice that brought me home. If you're not on that altar as a living sacrifice, your head's full of voices. And then we wonder why kids crash and burn. We wonder why marriages are shattered. And the Lord said, I'm the one who has the voice. All I can remember is that voice saying, stay with me. Stay with me. Don't listen to what's going on in your head and don't watch the storm. Stay with me. And I'll take you through. Tonight you have a God who has promised to take you through. A living sacrifice, holy. I was in Alaska doing a lost man. Everybody stand. Can't add to that other than if you hear the Lord speaking to you this morning as they sing, as they minister a song, don't harden your heart, don't turn it away. There's
many of us that will come and pray with you. Don't think you'll be there by yourself. But please listen to the voice of God. Hearken unto his voice. Hear him this morning.
I hear your voices, I hear your prayers, and my eyes see all. Lord. From 1 Corinthians chapter 14, there are times that the Lord will choose, and it's totally Him. It's not anything of man. He chooses to, to, to give a message and have it be interpreted. And uh, we have a message in times that have an interpretation and a description. The Bible says that it does happen. He can't happen, but it's at His choosing that that, that, that happens. So. I just want to praise him this morning for, for one of the words that, that he gave us. And, you know, just so thankful, so thankful that uh, he cares so much about us. Uh, you know, you, you think about what has happened uh, in the last couple of months. You know, we've had a total solar eclipse. We've had a, what we call a pink moon. Uh, they've had uh, also the star that came through there it was called the devil star and uh, you know on everything in the, in the heavens and in the sky that these things are going on and uh, of course you know we've said we here before that the sky is god's billboard that's where everybody can see not everybody can see certain events but they let them just happen before we can see them you know that those uh, they call it the northern lights that just happened here recently uh, that is very, very rare for this area for us to be able to, to witness that or see that. Uh, but you know, for I think out west and the, uh, the northern states, they they get to see that quite often. In other countries, they get to see that often. But we didn't get to do that. So if that's God's build, is is His billboard, and He's speaking, uh, He said that there would be signs in the heavens. You know, and uh, what what was interesting to me is because of the solar eclipse, the pink moon, the uh, star that went through there. In Luke 21, it says, and there'll be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Well, you know what? All three. Sun, moon, and stars. All three signs there. And, and I thought that was, I said, wow, that's, a, that's interesting to me. Because it, it, when he says there'll be signs in the sun, moon, and stars, and then all three are listed there, you know, I've noticed before there's in one or the other, but I didn't, I've never noticed all three like that. Together. And it's been real recent, in our, especially in our areas. So I believe he's speaking to the church. And, and you know, for chapter two of Revelations, a revelation that it, the uh, verses end when he's speaking to the churches. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Folks, if we're listening, he's speaking. There's no doubt. There's no doubt in my mind that he's speaking to us. Amen. James Benil, I'm just so blessed today, and I know you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then get to say they want to live for the Lord from here on out. So, so blessed. So blessed. What's it called? Bell of Salvation? Bell of Salvation.
That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right, Jim. Shut and tie the hammer. I, I praise God, praise God. I truly believe that. I truly believe that. I believe that. I believe that. I believe that. I believe that. One of the angels walked over and said, I said, what you've been you praying for up here. Praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Joe. Yes. God's spirit is so strong in here. Yes, he is. If you need the Lord, please don't hesitate. Don't leave today. Amen. Without repentance. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, harden not your heart. He's speaking to you. Be wonderful to see our children come forward here. Amen. I didn't sing speak a word for Someone told me that that this happened while they were at church one day and that the church went on and it was them. They thought they said that. And so maybe we remember, remember speaking where I want to sing one more song while somebody's had a chance to pray. And if there is someone here, you know, that somebody told me that this happened and they, they kind of just went on to church and, and they, they didn't get I'm grateful that God showed me a good church. She sings this song. The Lord's speaking to you. He's speaking to your heart. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior, He's speaking to you. Listen. Just listen to me. We want you to pray. pray. We'll, we'll pray with you. No, it doesn't matter. We'll pray. You might say, I don't know what to say. The Lord will give you words to say. Just forgive me. And your part is believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus. God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's as simple as that. As we do this one song, if you, Brother Ben, Brother John, if you'll make it, first step. Yes, first step. That's the hardest part. First step's the hard one. I know, I remember hanging on to the, the, the few. When I turned loose, I came forward. Let's see. Amen. If it's a fun
Saints forever. They blew up in just a few years later. And a straight to us. They said.
Lord's definitely working in this place this morning. Amen. We're not going to close, but if you want to leave, you can leave. Or let me see this. You want to stay around and pray more for us? But we're, you know, come back at 6 tonight. But we're not going to leave. We don't want to leave. Because the Lord's moving. If you feel like you need to leave, go on. Free to leave, but I think we're going to stay in the praise for
turnovers and they won't hurt. All right, let's stay here, everybody. Thank the Lord first. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be together with brothers and sisters. Thank you for your word, for all you do for us, Lord. We're so thankful. Thank you for showing us the Holy Spirit you're always welcome in this place. Come and minister to us, God. Thank you for all. Thank you for all. Others who travel back and forth places to keep us safe and gather us back here tonight at 6 o'clock. Thank you. We praise you for all you do. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. May be gracious unto you. May lift up his countenance upon making you peace. The name that's above every name. The name of Yeshua Hamashiach. Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.